Every once in a long while, a knife design comes along that you just look at and immediately know that there is a knife attraction to it. You are attracted to it because of its lines, design, and potential capability built in just to the layout itself. Well, the ANV Knives M311 has that just built into the DNA. It connected with me immediately the moment I saw it and really put a and V knives on the map for me. Prior to seeing this on an Instagram post, actually, I didn't even know the brand existed. And immediately I said, I got to check this not only model out, but this company that is making a design that has stealth, combat, survival all built into just the layout of how they're making this blade. We are going to have so much fun here at the Blade Boot Camp today. I have thrashed on this thing, thumped on it to see if the lines, the designing, the materials can stand up to what it looks like it can. Just look at it, that knife attraction. <laughs> mm. All right, guys, I'm gonna quit jacking around, running my mouth. Let's go ahead and actually get to it, talk about what it can do, show you its capability, and take a look at this blade. All right, let's zoom in on what makes this knife work, the stealthiness of that blade, right? The, the business end that you're gonna be sticking, slashing, carving, cutting, doing the work with, what does it have going on? Uh, you are gonna be looking at a thickness on the spine back here by the handle of 0 0.2, and that stays pretty consistent all the way down the transition of the tip, and then you get a good robust tip, very um, pointed, that is very good for penetration, you know, some certain things that you're gonna be doing with, you know, this has a potential to be used more in a, a stabbing, piercing role than other designs of knives that may be out there. So it does very good in that, but giving you a robust tip too. Um, so it gives you, you know, some, some more strength than maybe like a full flat grind because it has a high saber grind on it with some really nice transitions, um, some swedging that never really causes an issue. There are placements for your thumb if you are wanting to make like a, a feather stick or carve or whittle um, or, or uh, do some sort of notching where you wanna put pressure with the back of your thumb on the blade, you can absolutely do that. Now, uh, there are two different types of steels and lots of coating options. Uh, so the version that you see here is the ANV pattern. Uh, so that is their logo, um, actions not words, uh, cut into the blacked out coating. Uh, and that is on LMAX steel. Now you can get, from what I understand, uh, just a straight up DLC coating. You can also get what they call their ANV Topo, which is super sick. I've seen some images of that, that is awesome. Uh, and those are some options as well as you can get Stonewash, but I believe Stonewash is on only currently the N690 version and you can get it with that steel as well, at least on the ANV website. And we'll talk about you know availability here in just a moment where you can pick these up stateside as well. But uh, going back to the coating, when it's holding up very well, it looks great when it's been abused like that. I mean, use your knives, guys, use your gear. Man, does it give it character. And this knife is already showing signs of amazing character. Now, um, the edge geometry was fantastic. Uh, it, it carves, it cuts, it goes through paracord, seatbelt, rubber material, man-made stuff, um, as well as natural stuff. I was able to do fine carving and whittling if I needed to, to make triggers and traps and spears, you know, and those type of things. Do basic woods craft with the tool, and the edge geometry was great on it. It was from the factory, everything that you're seeing here. And then obviously more slashing and piercing and the man-made stuff, it ate that up as well. And I like that high saber grind that it came with giving you robustness, but also being able to still perform in a lot of different tasks that you may wanna put this through. And I wanna focus and kinda of hone in on the steel choices that are available and performance that you're gonna see out of them. Now the first is uh, the more budget friendly of the two models, and that's gonna come with Bowler N690 steel. N690 steel is um, a good stainless steel. It's in the world of like VG10 and 154CM. I really like its performance. It's pretty rust resistant, easy to put an edge on and will hold a good edge. And I have seen it on one of their pocket knives, ANV's pocket knives, and they do a good heat treat and you know whatever they're doing with it. It performs well for N690 and that will be the cheaper version and that's the Stonewash version over on the ANV website. Now I don't believe currently that is available for the US market, maybe down the line it will be. Um, for the US market, and also on the AMB website is the LMAX steel version. And that is what we are looking at here today that I've been using is LMAX steel. Now I'm not super familiar with 
Max. I've only used it on about three or four knives. The edge retention is insane, and the toughness is bananas. And in fact, I was doing a little bit of research, and I'll try and annotate it in. This is off of Blade Ops, a little article they did, just about LMAX steel in general. Um, and as I was reading this, the Cutlery Allied Trade Research Association did an edge retention test, um, and they did it with LMAX steel versus M4 440C Buller M390 Super Clean and uh, Vanadius 4. Uh, and the craziness is that the LMAX won out on all of those when it came to edge retention. So, I mean, the edge retention on this is, is going to be mind-boggling for the LMAX. And I'm seeing that. I mean, I haven't even touched it up. And everything you're seeing is factory edge. And it is bananas. I mean, it, it is crazy in that. And then when it's uh, done with toughness, when they were doing a toughness test, it was holding up super, super well um, at a Rockwell of 61. Now, this one, according to their site, is done at 60. But at, even at 61 Rockwell, it was beating out all these other steels at like 57 Rockwell. So even at super high Rockwells, this t the toughness, so it's not going, so it's going to be able to hold up against really hard abuse is really nuts and will outperform stuff like s35 vn um, s30 v definitely outperforms n690 you know all that stuff so the l max is something that you are going to be getting a super premium blade that is very rust resistant corrosion resistant um, but also going to hold that edge for a very very long time now always keep that in consideration with the field knife you are gonna if you do damage it at some point like chip an edge or you know do something to it pretty bad you're gonna you know you're gonna put a brand new edge on it it's gonna take time you're gonna have to invest some good elbow grease to get a good working edge back on it that's always the trade-off to a super steel um like that so just keep that into consideration but if you know tune it up on a ceramic rod from time to time or a leather strop and maintain that edge this should never really even need a reprofiling or a resharpening in that sense unless it's literally like you're beating on it through concrete or something like that. So I think the LMAX is an amazing steel choice, um, kind of exotic, and it's definitely going to produce amazing results for you and me, the user. All right, so now we gotta hit this handle because when you look at a combat utility knife, survival knife like this, uh, it, it has a potential to either be great or really kind of chunky, blocky, hot spots. It's designed to stab and pierce, you know, and just give you good traction for a quick cut. And that's it. Using it as a woods craft knife for 20, 30 minutes, making, you know, a lot of feather sticks for a fire or something. It, oftentimes it's just not the case. And from the side profile, I was like, either it's gonna be great or it's gonna kind of suck. So I wasn't sure what I was getting when it arrived and when i got it i was boggled mind blown my hands were uh, i mean just knife attract i mean it, it was like oh my gosh it was like holding my wife in, in an embrace i mean it, it was so nice guys seriously look at this handle we're looking at 5.25 uh inches overall so generous i got large size hands we're large size gloves you guys know here at the channel look at all the real estate i have left over very generous finger choil in there never worried about like nicking it in my finger you got a really good valley right there that only gives it a cool aesthetic but perfect and gives you kind of a better pinch point when you are choking up and using the choil for finer cuts so i really liked that and then the jimping was not sharp i didn't know from the profiles like ooh, that could be like really painful but even when i did put my thumb right here it gave me a perfect amount of traction without it being overly bearing and then if i just do the natural hammer grip you don't even know that it's there if you're not using the choil and then even around the neck Look at how full there is a this is a huge handle guys this is good this is not blocky it's obviously perfectly contoured everywhere i mean look at that thing and then it's got that ribbing all the way through that gives you great traction but never creates a hot spot it gives me everything that i need and gives you that even that flare out out the back so it stays in hand so if you did have to do those light ha hacks and cuts it's great in a reverse grip i mean we got full traction for piercing and stabbing that guard is amazing. And just how big and round and full that handle is, I can use this all day, all day long. And it's not painful. It doesn't create hot spots anywhere on the knife. I was trying to find hot spots. Usually in a combat knife, it's doable. But, you know, there's just like some transitions that just aren't super comfortable. This is a great knife to hold. And for the style of knife, meaning a field knife, combat utility tool, it's going to be super comfortable. Now, of course, like, you know, your Mora Heavy Duty Companion is going to be more comfortable, more ergonomic for three hours of bushcrafting. But for the style and usage of this knife, 
it, it is uh, I don't it is very hard to find another model that can even compete with the ergonomics on this tool. All right, guys, I want to touch on the Kydex sheath here. We got a pancake design, so you got lots of lashing options. A little bit bigger footprint than a taco design. Some of you love pancakes, some of you love the taco. We're working with a pancake here. It's very solid, pretty quiet, really good retention, large drainage hole. You're going to get two molly tabs out the back here, but you can do all kinds of stuff. Blade tech locks, you can do drop leg, all sorts of different options that are available. This is their OD green. It almost or it's a green, it almost looks gray green. It matches really well with uh, the handle scales. I really like that, but you can get coyote, you can get black. There are options that are available out there. And then the other really nice thing is that we got a really good thumb ramp and the guard is just slightly exposed. So what that means is for a fast deployment, boom. I'm locked in, ready to rock and roll. There's no walk up that I need to do with the blade, even in a reverse grip, boom it's ready to be deployed and it's not something that i have to like readjust my grip on uh, if i needed to deploy it in a quick situation all right guys so now we're going to talk pricing availability where can you get these and how much is it going to cost you to get a tool like this in your hands now currently when i make this video you got two options if you're over in europe you should go check out the anv website there is where you can pick up uh all the different models that they own you can get them shipped from what i understand worldwide obviously shipping and pricing and all that varies by um you know uh, euro versus other options of financial you know means and, and that type of stuff for us here in america it's a little bit easier we got blade hq now carrying anv knives and they've got a batch of these m3 11s um, available now the pricing on this and i'm going to be focusing on the us dollar so i don't know all the variables with euro and different things like that if you go through their site um, but for the us market this is going to go over on blade hq for just over 320 bucks i believe 322 is the going rate for this model with the l max and the coated blade in the different options that you're seeing in this video today now 320 25 bucks you know what what does that look like what what, do you, what else is on the market that this is competing with because i believe it's definitely in that premium realm of combat utility field knife you know so the, uh, that's something you have to consider when you think about the steel l max and you start looking at other blades of similar size you're definitely in the like 300 to 400 dollar range so it's definitely right there for what the materials require and when you think about other premium knives kind of in this vein i mean i think of like spartan blades using s35 vn which as we've kind of touched on isn't quite as tough as this l max those knives are going to go for like 425 dollars and they have similar profile similar capabilities to this so uh i think it is very competitive in the arena that it is playing which is i would say premium combat utility knives so i do encourage you guys go check out the blade hq website i know with this first kind of run they have very limited quantities so if you're connecting with this design i wouldn't sit on it you might find out that they are sold out real quick and hopefully this becomes a staple and a regular uh thing that they have in inventory over at blade hq because the designing is just for me as a user just connecting with me and i encourage you also for those of you worldwide go check out the anv website as well and blade hq has got the whole lineup of many of the designs that anv knives uh, offers that you can check out as well both pocket knives and other fixed blade designs coming down the line and i appreciate them shipping this over to me so i could test it out review it for you guys thump on it beat on it see pros cons so that you guys can make the wise choice on whether or not this design is something that you want to pursue after put it on a rig start deploying in your regular adventures uh, or if there's something else that you would rather pursue either in the anv line or just in general that's what i always want to do here in these type of videos is give you data feedback content so you guys can not only be entertained but have a real good feel on what the product is going to be able to do for you well folks there it is there you have it you know, there are times where you you hope, you see the design, and you're like, please, God, let it be good. Let it be good. And I have, I, I can't find an issue with this knife. You know, I'm trying to nitpick. I'm trying to like, uh, but man, 
is it on the extreme short list of combat utility you could push into survival designs that I have seen in a very long time. And I wanna hear from you guys. What's your experience, your feeling on the M311? And is it something that you would throw in your regular rotation? Uh, any questions that you have, I'll try to answer in the comments below as well. But uh, man, this is gonna be not only a competitive option for many, many other knives down the line when we do combat utility knives, but it's gonna be something that is regularly beat on and abused, and I know it's just gonna keep on ticking for me for years and years to come. Guys, thank you so much. Check out the other video popping up. Uh, I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber, throwing up content like this all the time. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.